are in the position of working with living composers in an era when the performer has become more important than the performer had been in classical music, perhaps, other than solos. Uh, and it gives you the chance to actually have conversations about the intention behind the piece. Can you address different situations with different, I mean, you mentioned the squiggle with Zorn, and then you have oh, wow. some idea there. Other examples where working with the composer has given you an insight into the music that you might not have gotten from the notation. Uh, that Greek Greek is a good example of that. Because uh, I first, Zorn, you know, um, contacted me like around you know, a few years ago now. You know, asked me if I really wanted, if I wanted, to, if he wanted to write a solo percussion piece and I'd be interested in something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <coughs> I said, well, what do you think? What would you like it for? And like, we kind of asked, like, what, you know, like, what would you like to do? Blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, maybe let's just do it, keep it for one instrument, you know, one set of instruments. You know, I mean, I was hoping it would be like maybe one triangle or, you know, <laughs> or something like that. And then Zora said, well, I'll just write it for drums. And then it ended up being, you know, a 14 drum. <laughs> But, uh, you know, and he kind of wrote it. He came, he would send sketches by hand, and then he even came out one time. And we set it up, and we kind of looked at the first three pages to see if he was on the right track, you know, whether it was doable, see how the setup would be. You know, so he kind of did that, and so we're kind of working on it that way. And then finally, so that was it, you know. Like we worked on the first three pages, just a handwritten score. And then, like, maybe six or seven months later, he sent the whole thing. All finished, and then I just put it away. And then um, maybe a year after that, he sent me. A, a, um, I told him how I was going to do it somewhere. You know, maybe down, I think I was going to the city somewhere. And he sent me like a printed score, like a computer version score, something like that. And um, so I learned it, you know, without really just learned it on my own, without consulting with him at all. Blah, blah, blah. Ended up doing the piece. Uh, and then, you know, sent it back to him, and then he, he realized, well, he sent me, it was minus 20 bars, because you know, the <laughs> publisher is lost, so it, I had to do it again, uh, you know, with the new bars that he had found. And then, uh, so anyway, I learned this piece, and then the gist of it was, was that a few years, a couple years ago, uh, he wanted to do it in New York. So I went out there, and, you know, I played it for him, and, what, you know, and even though I sent him a tape, you know, I was holding four mallets and I was playing with guitar mallets and I was, you know, doing it in a way, you know, where I was doing it with four mallets to get around the drums. And Dorn said, you know, and I was playing it kind of, uh, you know, like more kind of thinking of it like Zanaka or something. Mm -hmm. Dorn just said, like, you know, that's totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I had in mind at all. He said, you know, what I really had in mind was like a soft and kind of undulating and, you know, kind of, uh, you know, I was thinking of this movie to have and have not, like that scene at the, you know, in the, in the uh, zombie bar with, you know, the, you know, the uh, black guy <laughs> playing on these, you know, giant pom pom with really big puppy ballads. <laughs> like, you know, just like you know, he wanted like timpani ballads, and he wanted just two beaters, and, and he said, I don't want four mallets, I just want these like really puppy, you know, like soft mallets. So I wanted, it was a completely different vibe. I mean, the concert was only like three days away. So <laughs> I learned it with four mallets, and I said, well, dude, I don't know if I can, you know, I've learned all these sticking. It was sort of being on the spot, but I kind of knew it. So after Zorn showed me, he took me up, he was showing me the movie and the scene, and some of these kind of And And so I had to kind of have like three or four days, three days really to kind of relearn the piece totally. And Zorn even had to rewrite it a little bit so that it could be done just with two mallets. And most of it. There were some sections where I put a little more, but when you're holding Tiffany mallets, it's a lot different than holding, for example, Marimba or Vibraphone mallets, which is how I learned it. You didn't want that vibe. So that was like a really good example of kind of like not even, you know, like, you know, learning the piece, thinking you know, you know what it is, and then actually getting there with the composer and see, knowing that it's something completely, you know, it's a completely different vibe. Yeah. It's like a, absolutely. And that's like uh, one of the great things of, you know, maybe working with that. Yeah, I think it's really hard to tell from notation. It's, you know, there was a, a piece that Chronos did by this Swedish composer, Jan Morfinson, and I'll never forget it because it was this cello solo that was really beautiful, and he had written Espresso. So, you know, 
I think, okay, you know, big fat sound, lots of vibrato, you know. And the first time I played it for him, he was like, oh no, no, same thing. He's like, that's not it at all. That's not right. He wanted it like really soft and really ethereal and like, you know, no vibrato and all this. So completely opposite of what that word meant to me at that time, you know. So yeah, I think there's certain things that you can't know what the composer wants unless you talk to them. And you don't have them right next to you actually, you know, showing you what they want. We the same thing when we did all these, like, you know, he's got these whistles where, you know, you can interpret that in many ways, but he was very clear, but you just had to, t you had to, you know, hear from him what he wanted and experiment, and then you'd say, that's it, you know, and then you go, oh, okay, you know, but you wouldn't know otherwise. Yeah, let's hear